You are fully here. So, uh, first I would lower your in-game volume. Like the, uh, the music volume, I mean. Because sometimes it gets in the way uh, when it comes to hearing enemy footsteps. I leave mine, I think, at like 20 or 25%, just so that I can hear it, the end of match volume to remind me that it's the end of the round, so you could play a little bit differently. Watch for like people sneaking up on the payload or whatever. But it's like just enough that I can hear it. So either do that or turn it all the way off. Most serious players turn it all the way off. Get in here! Over here! So this is like a really safe spot to play. Uh, the one good thing about it is it gives you... You could keep an eye on this, this flank over here by that bridge. So, uh, but other than that, it's, it's a bit passive. Um, in general, the best spot to hold with someone like Baptiste over here is kind of where your Hanzo is, like right here. And you could be out here on the balcony if you want to uh, peek out a little bit, um, maybe take some shots, but you have to see if it's safe first. So you have to just check for if they have snipers, basically. And if they have snipers, you have to play a bit more, um, a bit more careful. But they can't actually, like the Widow doesn't actually have line, sight line on you if you're holding as far over as right here. She will if you walk over on this side, on that right side of the balcony. So from here you can actually still shoot grenades down onto your Zarya. You can see most of the bridge. And you also can you know, heal your Widow over here. So that would be the best spot to hold. Um, unfortunately, your, your Zarya is just playing too far forward and taking a bunch of damage and needed you to look. Fully healed. See through the dragon's eyes. Marked by the dragon. So yeah, uh, this is kind of the spot that I was talking about earlier. This is the best spot to hold. Because um, you want to hold the most aggressive spot that you can without dying. So you just have to watch out for the enemy Widow as soon as you know that they have a Widow. Junkrat's not like a major threat from here. I mean, he can be if he, uh, if he gets a good spot to mind boost himself up above you and he hits you with like a couple, ro a couple grenades. So that's something to be mindful of, but... Good as so yeah, it looks like he tried making a rotation to the left and then you thought better of it. There wasn't really any reason to make that rotation going to the left. Um, it, it broke line of sight with your teammates for a couple seconds. Your Zarya grabbed and you threw the lamp. I'm not really sure why you used the lamp, but this would be a good time to use Ant Matrix. Ant 
And you basically put it right in front of the grav so that all incoming damage goes through it. See, this would be a good time to have the, uh, the lamp right now. I wouldn't have jumped down there, I would have stayed up top. And just hug that wall, pretty much. But I mean, it didn't matter because they were just cleaning you guys up anyway. Someone's looking out for me. This is the spot I would hold, kind of right here at the hump of the bridge. Uh, you don't need to go any closer than this, because Baptiste, does, he just doesn't need to be any closer. You could hit everybody with your grenades from here. So, yeah. If you're going to lamp that, um, hit a corner with it. So. Your instinct as Baptiste should be to be hitting lamps on corners like this, or maybe that, or maybe like right there. Kind of, so it's tucked away so the enemies can't reach it without going really out of their way to get an angle on it. And that just makes sure that the lamp stays alive for as long as possible. Um, and your teammates can still stay inside of it, but just from a spot that the enemies can't hit it. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I would have used the the shift there. The shift is more for either. Um, like really, really emergency healing. Or for just giving like a bunch of AOE to your whole team if your whole team is stacked up. But since it's just the Zarya, I would have probably just right clicked her. Because here in a little bit, you might need the shift for yourself to keep yourself alive if someone ends up um, attacking you. Because you're really out in the open right now. And uh, I think you should have, I don't know why you're walking forward, but you should have stayed back where you're, where you were on top of the bridge. <laughs> It's good that you're healing this, the Zarya instead of um, healing your, uh, or instead of like fight, fighting the D.Va. But, yeah. I mean, you've got your shift now, so that could kind of help you stay alive, but it would have been nice to have the shift like one or two seconds ago. Someone has to keep the it's tough because your team is running Hog Zarya and uh, you really need a, an Arissa instead of the Zarya for the kind of composition that you have. Um, I also don't think that the Moira makes a ton of sense. Like a Mercy would be good. Because whenever you have double sniper, Mercy starts to make a lot of sense because she can get pretty free resurrects off because snipers tend to play from long distance and from corners. And that means that the Mercy could just hide around a corner and just resurrect, and it's just like a free life. And also she could damage boost, which can be pretty big on snipers. Especially like a Hanzo. I'm keeping my attitude positive, love.
So yeah, you want to hold up here. You want to hold high ground for right now. The nice thing about Baptiste is, like, the reason why you hold high ground in general for, like, FPS games whenever you can, there's, like, three reasons. The first reason is, um, you have, like, ledges to control your, your oh, cover or how exposed no. you are. <laughs> the second reason is because you can easily shoot on their heads, because their heads are more exposed. And the third reason is that if you, if you need to go down, or fall down from high ground, you can. You could just jump down, and gravity takes you down. You don't have to do anything. But if you need to go from low ground to high ground, it's harder. So either with somebody like Ana or Zen, you have to go around the long way and find the stairs, or with somebody like Winston or Diva, you have to spend a cooldown to get up there faster. So you have to spend something to beat gravity and go to high ground. But with Baptiste, it's actually free, because you could just like crouch jump. And it just takes a second, and it, it's not a cooldown. So he kind of breaks one of the rules about why high ground is always so good. So it, and it basically just means that if you need to go on low ground, you're not giving up as much because you could get back up really quickly. So, like right now, I think you jumped down because your Zarya was in trouble. She died. Uh, now I would just crouch um, or rocket jump or whatever the hell it's called uh, back up to high ground immediately. Your Roadhog needs another heal. Heal him. You should be healing him again. And so you, you don't want to be splitting off right. You want to keep high ground. Because high ground's good. I don't know if it's just because you were afraid of the D.Va, but I mean, you've got your Roadhog there, so the D.Va by herself isn't really a threat. He could hook her and get some good damage and all that. So your diva is going up there to harass, so that's not that's not really smart. I wouldn't be going into a roadhog if I were diva. Like, I don't know. But it's not the best that you're kind of isolated from those two. And yeah, there isn't anything you could really do besides just spam right now, but just be really careful. As soon as you get discord, you got to be really careful. So the, the enemy widow's dead, um, but you do have to watch out for... Like, if you catch at the same time a Zen orb to your face and, like, a grenade from Junkrat, you're gonna die. So you do have to be careful. Get in here. Um, the lamp wasn't needed yet. That would have been nice to save that. I do notice that you use the... like staggering between using the healing grenades and the shots. So where you, you grenade and then you really quickly shoot. That's that's um, a good way to like cheat out more output. Uh, but I don't know if that works anymore. I feel like one of the updates fixed that. So I don't know how old this footage is, but maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't really kept up. But I think one of the updates made it so that that doesn't really work the same anymore. <laughs> The aim could be better. Uh, all game, I've noticed that the crosshair placement is a bit, a bit strange, and it, it's a little bit slow to update. Like I feel like uh, when your teammates are moving around, you're a little bit slow to follow them with your cursor, so that you could heal them. And I'll be back just one sec. Okay, I'm back. 
Um, so yeah, the aim's not the best. But I don't know if it's like a sensitivity thing. So um, you might need to lower your EDPI so that your mouse is less sensitive because it, it might just be like a precision thing because your, your mouse is too sensitive or like your in-game settings. But um, probably more than anything, you just need more practice. So what I recommend is just going in try-hard lobbies, like custom game uh, free-for-alls. Uh, and the try-hards are lobbies that people make which disable the, like, no-skill heroes, like Rhine or, or Winston or Brigida, like heroes that just don't have to aim. And it just gives you a good chance to practice aiming, basically, but in real-world situations that feel a lot like a ranked match. So you don't want to do... I don't like aim drills. Some people swear by them, but I don't like them because I feel like you're doing... You're aiming in a situation that's nothing like a real game, and I don't think that's useful because as soon as you step into a real game, you see that the enemies look different and their shape different. The gun fires maybe differently, and you know, gravity is different and they just move different, right? So it's just not like a real situation. Um, so I think that free-for-all is the best thing. So if you just grind between like 20 minutes and an hour and a half of free-for-all every day, you'll definitely see yourself get better over time. But also, yeah, I'd be interested to know what your, what your in-game sensitivity and mouse DP DPI are. See what I mean? Like, uh, Not your goodness, I'm but yeah, so you're coming down here, and I don't know if it's just because you wanted to heal the Moira, but you actually let yourself get pretty out of position. Because you want to be up at the high ground, like in that balcony area right now. Matrix ready. Like, you see how far away you are from the rest of your team. If one of your teammates starts getting hit hard right now, you want to be there. Already with your eyes on them. And you could you could aim down, and you're still gonna have eyes on your Rhine and your Widow. So you know, there's there's no reason to be where you are right now. My ultimate is ready. Get in position. I would have tried to shoot that Hanzo in the air because he was really low. So you're thinking about it. The thing with the ant matrix about this particular spot is this is a rough spot for it. So unless you get something like a shatter or something that's going to stop the enemies from moving, um, this is what I'm trying to show. So there are a couple of exits that the enemies can take. So say you drop, so you drop your ant matrix. So you put it right here. The enemies have a corner right there, this doorway, that they can dip out. If they're further back, they have another one back here that they can dip out. There's also a doorway right here. And they could just take any of those corners, depending on where they're at. Or if they're up here, they could obviously take either of those corners to hide behind. And all they have to do is just move a little bit, and you can't shoot them anymore through your ant matrix. So, you really want to save this for when the enemies don't have a nearby corner or like escape. So, what I would do if I had time to like think about it. Um, would be to hold like you can poke and like start the, the fight back here but ideally at some point end up uh, when you end up retreating backwards go back to the point where the payload is over there and try to cast it somewhere try to drop the ant matrix somewhere between like here and back where the payload is 
And that way it's just all they have are things like this to hide behind. It's not much, you know what I mean? Especially the bigger heroes like D.Va can't really hide behind these things, these pillars right here. So that'd be the best spot to save Matrix. And also it's good, it's really good if you tell your team, hey, I'm about to use Matrix, um, save your shit. Because your Ryan just used his, his Fire Strike, and Fire Strike is nasty when it goes through an Ant Matrix. It does 200 damage, so it's enough to kill any Squishy in one hit. Um, same with your Hanzo, he could save his Storm Arrows. And they would do a crap ton of damage too. So, you know, most likely the enemies are just going to back off. And they're just going to go through that door on their, on their right side, which is on your left. And they're not going to take much damage here. Yeah, which is pretty much what happened, but somehow the Junkrat ended up dying. So that didn't, that didn't look like it was needed. They're backing off, but the fight's not fully won yet. I mean, you're just up one. Um, another thing about when you, this is kind of a nice tip. When you see Ryan's do that, that like downward sweeping motion, and you know that they're gonna fire strike you, they almost always are going to aim for the corner. So um, your nearest corner is over here, right? So he kind of knows that if you're going to like back off, you're going to back off to that corner. So he kind of expects you to do that. And they automatic and they, they know that it's a projectile, so they can't aim where you're at. They have to predict where you're going to go. And you kind of walked into it. So uh, a good thing to try is when you see that, act like you're going to walk toward the corner and then go right so that you can dodge it. Because when I play run, I almost always aim for the corner and it, it just gets you the most hits. Your widow died. You could have given your widow the lamp if he didn't use it earlier. So this isn't a good spot. You're kind of out here. I mean, for one, you're right where your widow just died. So that means that the enemy widow can shoot you right now. And you don't have line of sight on your team. So you need to be pulling back in the uh, building. And you could take high ground if you want. You could just jump up there. So that would have would have killed you at higher ranks. So uh, that's a pretty good lamp, except um, like we talked about earlier, drop it at one of the corners. So drop it either here or over here, so that it's not right in front of the door. This way, anybody who's who just the way you dropped it, you put it um, right here in the middle of the doorway. So the Widow can shoot it, anybody can shoot it on the enemy team. It's just right there in the open. So you want to hide that thing so it's not as easy to kill. That way it stays up for as long as possible. Hello. Um, I don't know if a good situation to mention this is going to come up, so I'll just mention it now. One of the things that uh, is like a really common mistake that I see even, I've seen it even well into Grandmasters, um, not that I've been 
well into Grandmasters myself, but I've played with top 500 players who are guilty of it, is uh, when you're just cleaning up after a fight and you're just topping people's health bars off, press tab and look at your other support's um, ultimate charge. And if they're like pretty much at full charge, um, okay, so if you're pretty much at full charge, you shouldn't be healing if your teammate still needs their ultimate. So let them do the healing. That way they can get more ult charge. So you're not like stealing ult charge from them by healing your teammates, basically. Uh, that happens way too fucking much. So I wouldn't be going to that left window. It's just, you're, you're a bit far away from, the, if you start getting attacked, um, I mean, they're, they're gonna have a Reaper who could teleport to that window next to you. Diva can jump up there. Her mobility right now is pretty ridiculous because she has boosters on three second cooldown. Um, and the, wi the Widow can shoot you. So like, say the Widow body shots you and then Diva jumps you in the window, you're just gonna die. Or you're gonna have to spend like a lamp just to save yourself and that's not good. So um, that's a bit aggressive over there because you're kind of by yourself, your team's down below you. Stay kind of on the right over by back behind where your Hanzo is. You have options from there. Yeah. So because you can... If it's safe, you can come out here and you could stand where your Hanzo is. You could heal your teammates down below. If the Widow is dead, like say your Widow kills the enemy Widow, you can peek this aggressively because there's nobody really who is a ranged threat on their team. And you could start shooting their tanks or whoever you could see. You can come over this way and you could peek out that window if it's safe to do so. If you need to fall back down, like say that your team is going under the under the bridge, like in this area, and you can't see them, you could pop out this window, there's a window right there, and you could jump down and be behind your team, or you could go back out here. So you just have all the options. You could, you could fall down here if your team starts going inside the building to fight. So you just have all the options available from that spot where your Hanzo is. Thirty seconds remaining. This is definitely so. I see that you put the lamp down to protect yourself from the widow, so that you don't get headshot. But that's pretty greedy because your team doesn't have it now. If somebody gets in trouble, at the very least, I would give it to like one of your snipers, like um, give it to your widow or something. But I, I would definitely save it. I mean, like the enemy Ryan has uh, a shatter right now. And I don't know how well you guys have been tracking ultimates, probably not very well, but D.Va could have a D.Va bomb. D you know, Lamp is super good for, against D.Va bomb. So... And your Widow ended up dying even though you had a Lamp right next to her. I don't know if the Lamp uh, died because its time ran out or if she just wasn't standing in it, but... She didn't jump. See, this is... You ended up taking a shot from the Widow that lowered your health, and now you're getting jumped by D.Va. So, you know, like I said, your positioning was aggressive there. That's a good spot for Matrix, uh, good timing for it too. Your Ryan's in there taking um, a lot of damage, so you want to be dropping as many healing grenades as you can through there uh, so that he's not, you know, 1 HP when the immortality ends.
science will reveal the truth. True self. Switching to Zen now, your other teammate is Brigida. I don't really like a Zen switch here. And I really don't like Brigida. I mean, I don't know, the Brigida switch is like, okay. Uh, just because they have Reaper and being able to stun Reapers Blossom is really nice, but. I don't know, I kind of like Mercy here actually, uh, because you still have two snipers and D.Va can't stop Mercy from healing. Is without form. Ugh, you're Hanzo. That's a that's a bad room for Hanzo to be playing in. So I would just stay mid if I were you. But I would be backing off. Like, if the, if the D.Va and the Reaper decide to start coming in, you don't want to be too far forward. You want to make it so that they have to spend as much time in the open getting shot at before they reach you as possible. So, there are pillars behind you that you can hold from. <laughs> Harmony, your, your Hanzo, right? He needs it right now. Nobody has a Harmony Orb. And you're out in the open, way too much out in the open. So you want to be hugging a pillar like this, like right here. And, but probably not this one. You want to do that to this one over here. Go hug that pillar behind it, basically cutting off the widow's line of sight to you. Hanzo still needs you to harmony him. And that's that's too brave to be peeking Widow like that. That's too brave. Um, as you climb, you'll get punished for that pretty hard. Zen's a very uh, vulnerable hero, and he needs to always respect Widow's sightlines. He's pretty much the easiest person in the game to shoot. I mean. Yeah, see, she body shot you there. Okay. So you heard the Reaper. You discord him, which is good. But look at that shot. I mean, so you shot at like leg level. Um, the fact that it was too far right is like, you know, that's not that big of a deal because you had to, you have to predict which way he's going to strafe and he just went the other way. But these have to be at head level because I mean, like for a Reaper, it's kind of like this for most heroes, but like for a Reaper, um, his head is not much narrower than the rest of his body. So like, it's just really nice to aim head level. And for the most, for most heroes in the game, you're aiming at like their necks, like their throat from the front at least, because the neck is actually a headshot. And it's also kind of gives you some room to miss in any direction. So if you aim it like their forehead, that's not very good because if they crouch or if you just aim a little bit too high, your shot will go over their head and you'll miss completely. But if you aim it like their neck, if they crouch, you'll still dink them in the top of the head. So it's still a head shot. But if they jump, you'll still hit their body because you'll hit low, like you'll hit them like in the chest or the stomach, but it's still a hit. So that's the best spot to be aiming for. Um, so you just want to find 
the level of their head with your cursor and just move it horizontally left or right from there. Um, that second shot was, you should have known that he was going to go left because he, why he doesn't want to go right because your whole team is over here to the left. So there's no reason he'll go, he'll go right. He's going to go left. So you should have predicted and shot like kind of right beside that box. And then you shoot the box itself, which that's just because you were, you were tracking his movement through. And there is no way to shoot him, but that was a good shot. But yeah, aiming with Zen is hard. It, it has a very high skill cap and you want to just put a lot of time into just practicing on Zen if you're going to be playing him. So I'm just going to skip forward here. So same kind of thing, but with Anna. I probably would consider, just me personally, I probably would consider playing Mercy here because Mercy is nice with double, double Sniper. Um, I think I explained it earlier, but because Snipers are playing from far away and they hold corners, you could just resurrect them from behind the corner and it's like the freest thing in the game. Like there's pretty much no way for an enemy to stop you unless they got killed by like a flanker that killed them up close. But it's kind of cheating for like the Widow versus Widow duel. Because you just get a free life, so. Like, I don't know, it, it kind of depends on uh, how much faith you want to put in your snipers because Mercy is going to help your snipers a lot. So if you have like carry snipers, then she would be good. But if you didn't, then in this type of a team comp, you might just want to play someone like a Lucio because that's going to enable your tanks a lot. And you have basically three heroes who are like almost melee range. Like, like Roadhog's almost melee, but you know, short range. So Lucio's, Lucio's kind of like the opposite of Mercy. Mercy's really good for like ranged and like DPS heroes, like who don't have a lot of health. Whereas Lucio's really good for enabling tanks because he gives them the speed boost that helps them. Like t uh, heroes like Reinhardt and Zarya and, and Roadhog, they're, they're really good as long as they're right in front of the enemy and really close range. But sometimes they can get beaten because they're they're getting poked before they can close that distance. But because Lucio gives a speed boost, he lets them like cheat by closing that distance really fast so that you're instantly, almost instantly within the range that is good for heroes like Reinhardt and Brigida. Uh, I mean, good try, but... So yeah, at this point I would be backing off. You don't really want to be holding the payload. I mean, if the Reinhardt just stepped up on you, he would kill you. So 
well, that was a pretty pointless sleep. Um, I guess we should talk about cooldown usage in this um, matchup. Because normally, um, the first thing you do when you are playing on it is scout out the enemy's composition and figure out what they have and who your sleep priorities are going to be. Um, so since they don't have somebody like a Doomfist, they don't have like a flanker that you have to sleep. Um, they also don't really have any ultimates that you would sleep. So you can be kind of a little bit more liberal with your sleep dart, but you don't want to waste it and just throw it out in a situation where it's not likely to hit anything. Um, I would say that Reinhardt charges are one of the best ways to use it in this composition. Um, Widow can be a good sleep target if you see that she's like standing still or if she doesn't see you firing the dart at her. Like if you can get like a side angle on the Widow and you're really sure you can land it, that can be really good. Um, Junkrat usually is going to be a really hard one to sleep. Same with Mercy, same with Ana. Um, and always watch out for Diva because she'll eat your sleep if you fire too close to her. And then for your nano boost, you're generally going to be putting it on Rhine or Roadhog. I would love the nano boost on Rhine if you had a Lucio. If your Birgitta was a Lucio instead, that would be really good because you could speed boost him in and like force a fight with a nano Rhine. But either Ryan, Roadhog, or Hanzo, depending on the situation, would be your nano boosted targets. So there wasn't anything you could really do against the tire. The, the um, purple on Ryan was pretty good. I would probably um, grenade my feet here, just because 80 HP isn't great. And then heal your Hanzo to the left. Um, it's hard to see where your teammates are. I would like to look to the left, and if your teammates are like ready to go, Consider boosting your Roadhog here, but wait till he takes damage so that it's like a it's like a heal, so that you get the heal out of it and you boost him. I mean, or you could maybe maybe uh, nano your Rhine as well, but like um, if you were in comms and you were in team chat, ideally you would just tell your tanks like go go go, like go in hard. I'm gonna nano you, you know. So that way they start playing aggressive, and they'll take damage, and then you can heal the damage with your nano to get like the most value out of it. You see, as opposed to nanoing him when he's full health. Get in there. But that worked out pretty good. So. And then here you just have to find cover. Um, because you just got two kills, you can actually think about trying to sleep. I would, I would do it, just because, I don't know, like, why not? But I would think about sleeping that D.Va in midair. It's actually not that hard, because, um, when targets are in the air, they can't control the way that they move as much, so you could predict it really easily, and there's no way for them to really dodge you. It's just, it's just a skill shot. It's just whether you can predict it well enough. It's actually not that hard. I oh, should have landed that. Had plenty of warning on that one. That's just practice in uh, in tryhard lobbies. Just go into tryhard arcade mode and just play Ana for like an hour, like every day. My shots find them. I would even think about throwing a nade in that doorway where the widow is firing from right now, because you could see the lines where she's firing from. Check a nade in there, purple or that that would make her fuck off. Cause you're not gonna need the grenade for anything for like a bit. 
they can't really take a fight because their Reinhardt just died, so you might as well use it. Yeah, you gotta be careful of your Rhine, your tanks getting in front of you, so. If you wanted to purple, you could jump in front of him and then throw it so that he doesn't block you. Uh, that's a bad sleep because D.Va was right there. And I think she ate it. But even if she didn't eat it and you slept her, it doesn't really do anything because... You know, you can't kill her before she flies away anyway, so... Pretty much D.Va is... Uh, Whenever you see a diva around somewhere that you're thinking about sleep darting, that's like a it's like a stop sign. It's like wait, stop for a second and rethink your choice to throw a sleep dart because it's just going to get eaten. You're basically just hoping that the diva is bad, and as you as you climb and go against better and better divas, that just doesn't happen as much. It's it's rough playing Ana into a diva. Yeah, definitely follow your Ryan. He's going, he's going in. Um, that's a fine nade on him just to make sure that he stays up. So he's nanoed and he's about to come around the corner. I would, if I were you, I know that you don't see the silhouette through the wall like I do. Oh no, actually you do. Because uh, your Hanzo... Sonic arrow to that. So you actually see that he's coming around the corner. So I would pre-fire that corner, that doorway right now with a sleep dart to put him to sleep as he comes around. And with any luck, your Roadhog and your teammates won't shoot him and he'll stay asleep. So yeah, so you do kind of do it, uh, but then he gets woken up. So right now, this is potentially this is potentially bad because um, how to describe this so you're all the way back here and you, this corner right here I mean the enemies are all around here and your Ryan is about to cross this corner and go into the enemy team and fight and you're not going to have a line of sight on your Ryan or anyone on the enemy team. So he's kind of, he's going to get creamed if he tries taking that. Because he's not, he's maybe not taking into account the fact of this corner and where his team is. Um, but what I would say is that you need to start rotating over here. Over this way. Where I think... Is this your Widow over here? You could duck and take cover on this railing right here. And you're that way you're watching this and you actually can see the fight. We're good to get the purple. That's probably a pretty good um, nano, just because the Rhine did, their Rhine did charge and he landed behind yours. So he's kind of overextended into your team. So if you guys really clopper him right now, you could probably kill him. That would have been a juicy... That would have been a pretty juicy um, grenade, like right behind that Rhine barrier right now. That'd be a really juicy grenade if you had it up. Um, I kind of like that sleep dart. I, I probably would have done the same thing, try to sneak it in there. Because uh, there just isn't anything else that you're going to need it for. You know, McCree just used his high noon. So you don't need it for the high noon. You don't need it for the Reinhardt charge. And what else is there? In this composition, there's nothing else to use sleep dart for. You're just going to be holding it, so that's a fine one. And if you knock, 
you put the McCree down, and if he gets woken up like one second later, it's fine because that's the best you're gonna get out of the sleep dart right now. Um, I would, I would nade that right now because you'll both purple the enemy, Ryan, and, and healing boost your own. But you waited until the D.Va came in and matrixed it, so the D.Va actually ate your grenade. She might have eaten it anyway, because D.Va can actually eat your grenades from behind you. And she, sometimes she's matrixing, matrixing you from behind and you can't see it, so... Um, yeah, that... That sleep was kind of... I would have saved it. Be nice to have sleep right about now. Actually, actually be really nice. You would actually... Not only would you stay alive, but you could run back to your team and help your team win the fight. And Reinhardt would be stuck behind you guys. So you could stagger him super hard if you slept him right now. You see what I mean by how, like saving your cooldowns for when they're like actually needed? Looks like you guys are winning though. Yeah, the payload's rolling. Why do Ryan's charge in like that? Uh, waste of sleep dart. It wasn't likely to hit anything there. But this would be a good time to think about grenading. Both to help your Brigida stay alive and to it like if you if you purple enemies, they tend to kind of like back off because uh they know that they're they could just die if they're purple if they're not careful, so it's a good way to make the enemies play more passively. Because your your Brigitte is going in as the only front line right now and she's she could easily die. Hopefully she gets out of there and realizes that she's the only one. I'm i I'm really surprised you're still holding on to your grenade. That was You could have gotten a big purple off in there. Cause because it's really bad if your Brigitte dies right now, because it just staggers you guys out even more. That was a good sleep. Um, pretty good nano as well. I probably would have done the same thing. Oh, that's rough. Got stuck on the thing. But like, I don't know, like, honestly, this is a, a good time to point out like the positioning thing that I was talking about earlier with like holding corners all the time. You were actually right here, which is, um, it's rough because look at how close you were. If you'd have been standing right here, you'd have had the same exact angle. So you could have, you could have healed or grenaded all of the same targets, but you're behind cover. So when the diva bomb comes through, you don't have to worry about slipping up on lampposts and stuff like that. Cypher, get behind something! The payload has reached the checkpoint. I'm ready to rally! I'm in aim. Uh, 
it sucks that your Ryan pushed up so far. Why did he do that? Uh, nade your teammates because they're gonna die. Oh, that's good. No one can Okay. So you might be thinking about purpling them. Your Rhine is back. You just got two kills. So you might be thinking about purpling them right now. But you want to wait until your Roadhog comes over. And everybody's like right there, ready to just push it in for that last couple of feet. Because if you purple right now, neither your Rhine nor your Roadhog are there to hit them. So you want to wait until your front line is like right on top of theirs before you purple. And then if you get the purple off, you could force a fight. Somebody has to stand on the payload to prevent it from capturing. And whoever's purple is just going to die. So you want to strike while the iron is hot, so to speak. And yeah, this is not contest. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, main thing, uh, work on your aim. That's just, uh, it's not really something to think about in the middle of a ranked match or whatever. It's just something to practice and just put a lot of time in. And just with time, it gets better, in my opinion. So just play tryhards. Um, I don't bother with any like aim drills, aim trainers, or um, custom matches versus AI Anas or anything like that. I don't like doing that. I just say, um, Practice only the heroes that you're actually going to play, so don't go, like if you just want to practice a support, don't go and play McCree or whatever, or Widow. Practice um, with the heroes you're going to play. And with Ana, the nice thing is you don't ever need to worry about headshots because she can't headshot, she can't crit. Um, and with a lot of heroes, you're just aiming for the widest point on their body. So it's you have to break the habit. Um, that you might develop with someone like Zen or Baptiste of aiming for like the neck like I was talking about earlier. And with Reaper, for example, but with a lot of heroes, you're actually aiming for like the legs. As weird as it sounds, you actually aim for around like the knee area because uh, it's just the, the, their hurt box is the thickest right there. So you're more likely to hit them there. Same with Lucio, his legs are really beefy, so. Um... And yeah, just practice your mechanics, and th I feel like that's the main thing holding you back, but um, there's also some, a little bit of like cooldown usage could be better, positioning could be better. So just basically do what I did um, for your VOD reviews. So every time you play a ranked match, spend more time actually watching over the match and seeing what you did wrong, like, oh, I should have been here, this would be a better spot to hold next time. Like. I should have been taking cover right here instead of being in the open, that kind of thing. Just criticize your own videos and you'll learn the right thing to do. And practice every single day with your aim in free-for-all lobbies. And yeah, you'll climb. <laughs>